Well, let's start getting to your Perdon. wagers here. And, and, of course, these are wagers that Bear actually makes because no one would in their right mind would give out a fake wager for Georgia State, uh, Georgia Southern and Ball State. So let's get to your, <laughs> your first one here. A long list today, guys. Auburn at Texas A&M. Texas A&M is a 7.5-point favorite. The total is 51.5. Auburn is 3-0, but only 1-2 against the spread. They've only played one F -F FBS team. Only scored 14 points. That game against Cal A&M is 2-1. and one. They bounced back last weekend against Monroe, which you had as one of your best bets um, after the road loss to Miami in Week 2. Uh, Bear, what do you got here? You mentioned the the Cal game, the, the Auburn at Cal game. It was unbelievable. Like, 14 points. Peyton Thorne was 9, 14, 80-something yards. Turned it over a bunch. I think this is obviously a better defense in, in down in College Station that they're going to be facing. Look, I love Justin Wilcox's defense, but the players that the Aggies have on defense, they're far better than what Cal has. And I think maybe some people were a little guilty of holding that Miami loss against AM. What happens if Miami turns out to be pretty good? Miami might be pretty good. And that loss all of a sudden doesn't look as bad. So like look, AM's got the better roster. I know historically this game has created some kind of weird results and some upsets, but I don't think that's going to be the case here. I think the AM defense controls the line of scrimmage. I think they run the ball. I think Wingman and offense continue to evolve throughout the year with Stewart and the and the group of players that they have. I like the Aggies here lately at seven and a half. One thing I like to look at when it comes to college football is explosive play rates. I feel like the, the, the sport can be boiled down to sometimes can you create explosive plays on offense and can you prevent them on defense? And Auburn cannot create explosive plays on offense. No, which is amazing <laughs> for a for a you freeze type offense, but I think it shows what you inherited. And how far they have to go, certainly in the skill positions. When you're playing AM, you have to create explosive plays. You can't, AM's front is too good to go to pickleball them, right? Four yards, three yards, four yards. So I think AM is turning the right play here, laying the seven and a half. Let's get to pick, so. pick number two here. Stay in the SEC, Mississippi State plus six and a half versus South Carolina. Total is 48 and a half. Mississippi State is two and one, but they're only one and two against the spread. They just got blown out by the Tigers at home. The LSU Tigers, South Carolina is one and two. They lost to both FBS teams they played. That would be North Carolina and Georgia. And they've only uh, won once against Furman. What do you got, Bear? It's weird because they were an ab... Uh, Bulldogs were an absolute no-show last week against LSU. And it's not like Will Rogers has suddenly forgotten how to play quarterback. I mean, the, the guy, I mean... It just maybe it just do, does go to show you how great of an offensive mind Mike Leach was to be able to put him in great positions to to succeed. But I would think at some point Mississippi State Rodgers will play better. That at some point they're not going to convert only thirty percent on third down, which is what they're they're doing this year. And I just worry about the residuals of South Carolina last week. You lose Juice Wells. You're in a physical game with, with Georgia that you're leading at halftime, and then you do absolutely nothing in the second half. We saw this team really do nothing against North Carolina in the opener, and I, I, now you're 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 a big favorite, a big underdog rather against Georgia. Now you're close to a touchdown favorite, seven point favorite, six and a half at home against a Mississippi State team that is going to be motivated to improve on what they showed last week. I'm, I'm going to take Mississippi State here in the, in the six and a half. I, I, don't, I think South Carolina is a little overvalued here. This feels like an extreme overreaction to what we saw last weekend, right? Where, where LSU blows out Mississippi State. South Carolina plays close to Georgia. As I mentioned, they lost by two touchdowns to Georgia and two touchdowns to North Carolina, and they beat Furman. Like, Mississippi right. State has played Power 5 conference teams so far, and this feels like a complete overreaction. I mean, that feels like college football all the time, right? Like, the overreaction from one week to the other, and you get almost near a touchdown – on a Mississippi State team who's, who's played people. South Carolina has lost the two best teams they played right. by two touchdowns. All right, moving right along here. Liberty at Florida International. Florida International getting 10 and a half points here, plus 10 and a half. The total is 54 and a half here. Liberty is 3 and 0. They're also 3 and 0 against the spread. They just beat Buffalo 55 27. FIU is 3 and 1. They played in week zero, and they're 3 and 1 against the spread as well, Bear. Who you got here? Well, I, I had New Mexico State a couple of weeks ago in Liberty. And the turnover fairy got me again. At some point, <laughs> the turnover fairy has to stop with with, with Liberty, right? <laughs> I feel like every team I wager on, the turnover fairy hurts it's, me. Oh, no, I'm with no you. No matter what. That was the story of my week last week. It's, it's been brutal. But Liberty's plus eight on the year. Like last, last week, it did not matter. But they were absolutely the right side. Dominated Buffalo. And Buffalo was a side that I actually had an odds maker say, the sharpest guy I, I know Bet, bet Buffalo, and, and they were never in the game. So 
The win with the Liberty's win was no fluke. But now you're going on the road again th- this week, and you're going to FIU, which somehow is three and one, and they very easily could be four and zero. Oh. They were in that game uh, against Louisiana Tech, the game they lost in the opener, and, and over the way they didn't have their quarterback in the game. That Keon Jenkins, a uh, young guy who's been in the, in the game in the last, last three games, so they're three and zero oh with him on the lineup. They outscored North Texas 46-39, team that beat um, Louisiana Tech last week. So might be time. A lot of people actually thought FIU might be the worst team in the FBS this year. Might be time to, to readjust those power ratings maybe a little bit, and this might be one of the last opportunities to get in on FIU before that adjustment takes place. So I'm going to take a, uh, the Golden Panthers there out in, uh, in Western Western Day Unincorporated Dade County. <laughs> it, it does Plus feel 10 like, and a half. so we're week four college football now. After the first month of the season, it does feel like those preseason sort of predictions get readjusted, right? Because we, we know the people that we like that, that do all the analytics and pre- prediction of their models after week four is when they adjust yeah. based get, off get of the, the priors. You know, they get rid of the prior. So a uh, good point here for FIU. Let's go to Air Force at San Jose State. San Friday Jose night. State. Plus four and a half here, a total of 46 and a half. Uh, Air Force is three and oh. They've only covered one of those three wins. San Jose State is one and three, having lost uh, in games where they punch above their weight with USC and Oregon State. Um, who do you got here there? Well, you mentioned Air Force is three and oh, but you look at the wins. You beat an FCS team, Robert Morris, a team that just entered FBS from FCS, Sam Houston State, and then Utah State, who's one of the Mountain West's worst teams. So you're three and oh, but I'm not, again, we talked about this a little bit last week about how to compare records of teams based on opposite opponents. And Syracuse had that great 2-0 start blowing out Colgate and Western Michigan. And then Purdue was in the game with them. So I, I think if you look at San Jose State, the USC game, the Oregon State game, fine. That, what was going to happen was going to happen. But the game against Toledo last week, their defense actually played well. They were in the 21-17, a loss against a team that probably is going to win the MAC. Against Air Force, you're not going to get many possessions. Correct. And you need to capitalize on your possessions. So one of the good things about Cordero and the San Jose State offense is they've only turned the ball over twice on the year. So odds are maybe you're only going to get eight or nine possessions. But if you're not going to give them away, you're yeah. going to be able to maximize those possessions. So I, I think Cordero and that offense will give the uh, – the, the fly boys a little bit of problem. For, we, we all want a little Friday night entertainment, right? So I figure why not take a, take San Jose state plus the points here on a Friday night and be entertained. Cordero was the mountain West preseason quarterback of, you know, of the year. Mm-hmm. So people do are very high on him. The thing is, and I'm probably jaded by this. I watched San Jose state play an entire game against USC Entire game against Oregon State. Yeah, again, good, correct. Good, I, I have, I'm have i very jaded after watching them play those games because they looked atrocious. <laughs> uh, for a team that, you know, as we talked about, is was a Mountain West favorite. That was Boise State, who hasn't looked terribly good either, right? He's a Mountain West favorite. Uh, but Cordero can play. He's in his sixth season. Like, he can play football. Right. And now he goes down uh, in, in competition. We saw last weekend that looked better than against those powerhouse teams. All right, let's get to your next game. And again, guys, this is how you know Bear is betting these games. He's not, he's not giving you Georgia Southern at Ball State here. Ball State, Notre Dame, Cincinnati Ohio boys. State. Uh, 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 uh. Ball. We, we went the other team from Ohio. From, from uh, uh, for, for, we went the other team from Indiana, Muncie, Muncie Indiana. Indiana. And it's a book of South Bend, Indiana. Uh, Georgia Southern is two and one. There are two zero oh and one against the spread. Ball State is one and two. They played two SEC teams though, before beating up in Indiana State last weekend. Who you got here with Ball State? Yeah, and, and those games, Ball State against Kentucky and Georgia, I, I think they were both scoreless at the end of the first quarter. So they, I mean, they, they came out and they, and they competed for a quarter before predictably uh, getting getting blown out. And, and I think, I think Ball State might be catching Georgia Southern at the right time because Georgia Southern had the game against Wisconsin, turned it over six times, put up a bunch of yards, had an upset chance, and, and then the, the game got away from them from them late. Now you got to go back on the road again. Far less heralded team, far less desirable locale. Tougher to get up for this game. Like I, I think, I think Ball State might be catching Davis Brim and Georgia Southern at the right time here. Like, look at the situation as well in college football, which is something that I like to look at. Massive game at Wisconsin, Power Five, chance to pull a big upset. Next week you have Coastal Carolina at home, who's a team you're going to be competing with. Uh, in, in your league, it feels like an ultimate sandwich game type of spot. 
And this is a situation where I'm going to take Ball State and, and that defense against Georgia Sun. So give me, uh, give me the Cardinals plus the uh, six and a half. When you have two teams that aren't as great on defense but score a bunch of points, you just default to the home team in points most of the time. It feels like that's a good place to be, right? Um, you would you would think so, yeah. If, if, if your thought process is that they're going to be a bunch of points yeah. scored in the game, you, you would expect the, the the underdog to be able to kind of match point for point. So, yeah, I, I can see that. Is Georgia Southern the the uh, the, fighting, the fighting Clay Heltons? Is the, they are the fighting Clay Heltons. The fighting Clay Heltons. I like Clay Helton. He had, just was not ready for that USC job, but that, that happens. No, he, it, was, it was one of those where he never felt like – I don't want to say he never felt like he had a chance because SC gave him every chance. Yeah. It felt like it was just destined to fail from the start because the fans did not. Correct. This is a much better place for him. All right, Bear, we got one more. I know you guys are sticking with us here because gambling <laughs> group chat's coming up in a few minutes and we cover all the big games there, guys, okay? Tulsa plus four at Northern Illinois. Total is 54 and a half. Tulsa's one and two straight up. They got slaughtered by Washington, Oklahoma. That happens. We got two good football teams. Northern Illinois is one and two. But they've scored 11 points in back-to-back -back losses. Who you got here, buddy? Yeah, I was surprised to see Northern Illinois favorite here. And I actually, uh, I saw it at three and a half, and now I see four as well. So we're actually getting the, be uh, the better of the number here. But Northern Illinois shocked BC in, in, in that opener. But like I said, since then, blown out by, by Nebraska, lost to Southern Illinois. The offense might be the war, one of the worst in yeah. the country. Rocky Lombardi, the old Michigan State quarterback. Uh, who's now there. I'm going to take the Golden Hurricane in, in kind of a uh, the drop in class, to use a nice horse racing analogy, get blown out by two of the best offenses in the country, Oklahoma and Washington. Now you're facing a team that's kind of inept. I think Kevin Wilson and Tulsa will, will, will be in this game into Cowboy. So I'm going to give me the uh, give me Tulsa plus the points. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together.